All right. Hello. It's been a while. Let me clear some shit up right now. Um, you would understand if you saw me on Instagram post this a couple, a couple weeks ago, I believe. I said... I'm taking a break from the podcasting thing because I am going to be solely focusing on this boot camp that I'm holding in Sweden. All my cognitive energy is going to be put into creating an amazing boot camp. And now that I have more space in my brain, I'm going to come back to this and share some thoughts about sol- about solitude and why I feel, and here's the thing that you want to pay attention to, the bold statement, why I feel if you do not have solitude in your life, you do not have the ability to overcome stuttering, you do not have the ability to overcome any type of interpersonal dis, any type of interpersonal disorder that you're up against right now, whether it be stuttering, whether it be premature ejaculation, whether it be erectile dysfunction, whatever disorder or issues coming up for you that happens in a person to person, um, in interaction, engagement, I'll just call that an interpersonal disorder. Um, and a major theme and what I'm going to talk about is this guy named Cal Newport. The reason why he's a major theme is because he inspired this. He inspired a lot of my thinking the past few days, the past couple of weeks, about solitude and how important it is. And it allowed me to reflect on my life and share and share share with you that I would have not have overcome stuttering if I did not have solitude in my life. I'll tell you the moment that solitude allowed me to overcome my stutter and the other interpersonal issues that I've been faced with and how it will do the same for you. So to begin, I want to share what solitude means. This is not my definition. This is a definition by... um, Two dudes who co-wrote a book together called Lead Yourself First. One of the dudes is a former army officer. And another dude is a respected judge. Some type of judge. I forget what type of judge it is. A federal judge, but something else to that. And... um their definition inside this book that's all about leadership through solitude is that solitude is time away time away from the input of an, of another's mind of another's mind so the time that you spend that you do not have input of another person's mind. So right now you have an, you have input of another person's mind. Right now you're not in solitude because you're listening to this, watching my lips move and hearing my vocal cords make sound. I don't know if my vocal cords are making sound, but there's sound coming from my vocal cords. When you're at the gym listening to music, that music in, is input from another's mind. Someone, a mind created that. Um, Netflix, fucking Instagram, like the most basic shit, most basic shit. When you're on your phone at all, that's input from another person's mind. What isn't is sitting on a chair, sitting on a couch with no technology, your eyes closed just your thoughts. You have no input from another person's mind. Walking in nature without headphones, that's no input from another person's mind. I'm just going to make sure I'm recording right now. Make, yeah, I am. 
Um, but this also means that you can be in a cafe with noise canceling headphones on, zoned into your work, and not have input from another person's mind. So solitude doesn't mean you're alone. It means you're not taking an input from another person's mind. And that's going to be an essential, um, or at least a clarifying definition for you when we dive into this. To start, I want to share a quote. And the quote is by a dude named Blaise Pascal. You might not know him by name, but you may know this quote. The quote is, All of humanity's problems stem from man's inability to sit quietly in a room alone. With that being said, let's dive into this. So, I like like I already said, I truly believe you cannot overcome stuttering without or busting quickly or you can't get hard. Those issues, those disorders, they a necessity to overcome them is solitude, is time away from another person's from another's mind. I'm gonna share an experience with you to show you the validity of my argument to just help concrete it in your mind. For the first 17 or 18 years of my life, I was just taking an input from uh, from another's mind. I had no time alone with my thoughts. It's not like I was trying to be all trying to be an Olympic athlete and just fucking like I had no space. No, I had space, but I was filling it. I was filling it with distractions, with video games, with, before the age of 16, Clash of Clans. When I didn't have access to an Xbox, I played Clash of Clans. And even on the Xbox, there'd be like the time loading, like the, the game the game loading. I'm in a queue waiting for the game to start. Play, play Clash of Clans. Every time there was any bit of thinking that I could have, any bit of boredom, I would fill. I would fill, I would fill, I would fill. And I really felt this when I was 15 or 16 there was a stint in my life where I almost, I wouldn't say almost, but it's the closest I've come, it's the only time I was ever, I would say, sort of close to ending it for myself was when I was 15 or 16, I, uh, for a month straight, any time, I had any slight of boredom, any feeling of slight boredom, I would immediately I would immediately get hit by this feeling of sadness, of depression, of loneliness, of 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 isolation, and I would immediately start bawling, crying. Anytime I was alone with the thought, anytime there was a moment, a brief moment of thinking I would start crying for a month straight. And I looked it up and Google said I was I was boredom prone. Like, mom, guess what? I'm boredom prone. I'm more prone to being bored and it affects me more. This is what is happening. I just I just can't be bored. And um this caused me to just fill and fill and fill. Like to give myself no time for my thoughts to come up. I'd be playing games for my thoughts to come up that weren't affected by the input of another person's mind. Like playing a game, that's an input of someone else's mind. Like I am doing a task right now. I'm completing something, I'm building something, I'm attacking something. But when that shit's not on, uh uh-oh. The thoughts I I was having were fucking scary. And um, 
turns out I can't fill my life when I'm trying to sleep. When I'm in bed and I'm trying to sleep. So guess what? I would think and I would start bawling my eyes out for a month straight when I was in bed. I may have gotten two to three hours of sleep every night. The lowest quality of sleep. The sleep where you're like, was that even sleep? The time, like, I'm sure it couldn't have been two hours already, so it must have been sleep, but it felt like I was, I felt like I was awake. That type of sleep. I was exhausted. And it got bad where I was climbing into my mom's bed at, like every night within like the like after three hours of trying to sleep and just crying the whole time. I'd climb into my mom's bed and that's where I'd get like the two to three hours of shitty sleep. Um, and that, w- that went on for a month. A month. And looking back on it now, I know like that was just me, my repressed emotions from the f- 15, 16 years up to that point of not giving myself any time away from the input of another, of another person's mind, not giving myself any of that time and repressing everything that I've experienced, every pain, every stutter, every, every rejection, everything I repressed and did not allow myself to experience. That was coming up and I was, I was fighting it and it felt like I couldn't handle it. It was so much. It was so much. It was so much. And I, I, I know it was that now. And an interesting thing that got me out of that month is I climbed into my mama's bed one night and she said it in a kind of frustrate frustrated annoyed tone i like chase you you can't keep doing this and the next night i slept in my own bed fine i won't say fine but i got at least six hours sleep so pretty good from that point on it didn't it didn't it didn't ha- it didn't happen again but what i want to share now before we get on to the next point is in Cal Newport's book um, called Digital Minimalism, Minimalism, he was doing research on what happens when a group of people remove that, remove this, remove the solitude from their life. What happens to the group of people who are always distracting themselves and not giving themselves that time to think and have their own organic thoughts and be able to sit there with it? And he came across this this article in The Atlantic, which is a magazine or something. (laughs) I don't think it was actually in The Atlantic, but I'm pretty sure that means it was like in a article or something um where a woman i'm sorry i I don't know the woman's name he said it in the book but it was like he said it fast and i I didn't take the time to and it was a confusing name i didn't take the time to try to write it out sorry woman if you're watching this um where this woman explores the dramatic rise and i'm reading reading this off my computer the the dramatic rise of mental health issues and what she notices is the correlation with mental health issues and the correlation with smartphone use in teenagers are correlated. Um, the rise of the rise of smartphones and the rise of mental health issues are correlated. To put it sim- to put it simply, I'm not going to dive too much into it. Um, and she talks a lot about how this shit has really, really affected mental health and to gain attention from her readers to start a, re- a revolution on a revolution on this. Her, her title 
of the of the article is has smartphones destroyed a generation that shit kind of gives me chills because i feel that way i do feel that way um and cal states his opinion on the article that she writes and he says that that this makes sense and this is his words that these teenagers have lost the ability to process and make sense of their emotions or to reflect on who they are and what really matters. They've, they've also lost the ability to build strong relationships or even just allow their brains time to power down their critical social circuits which are not meant to be used constantly comma and rather to direct that energy into important cognitive housekeeping tasks he says we shouldn't be surprised that these abstinences leads to malfunctions so basically in my words now what cal's saying is like yeah it's no no shit all right, I'll I'll say it as if Cal is like a gangster in the hood. So Cal would be like, "Yo, dog, no shit, no shit that the smartphones are are causing these mental issues in these how in these in these teenagers because I'm gonna stop that." Um, he says we need that solitude and time alone to process our emotions to process our experience of what's going on in our in our life i'll actually skip to a quote that makes a lot more sense than me trying to what tell you what he's saying he says that um we fear solitude but it's exactly this time alone with our thoughts that we need to make sense of our experiences and grow as humans he also read the book called lead yourself first the book that i shared of what solitude the definition of it and he says a really big lesson one of the two lessons he took away from that book is that inside of this book they say spending time isolated from other minds is what allows you to process and regulate complex emotions it's the only time you can refine the principles on which you can build a life of character it's what allows you to crack hard problems and it's often necessary for creative insight. If you avoid time alone with your brain, your mental life will be much more fragile and much less productive. So these are people that have studied and live in um, solitude. Well, they don't live in solitude, but they study solitude and the impact it has on humans. And they say this, and this isn't, this isn't just Cal, this is everybody, or I won't say everybody, this is the people who study this shit. And um, it's very, very, very impactful. And what I want to share now is I have shared with you the um, my life before age 17, where every moment of my life was bombarded with something. I was doing something because I couldn't sit with myself stuttering severely any sexual experience i had i either couldn't get hard or i was busting within 30 seconds and 30 seconds it would have been five seconds if i was going at a nor at a normal pace i was going extremely fucking slow and that's what made the 30 seconds last that little bit and I just couldn't be myself also in any social situation. I was stuttering, I, all that sexual shit. Like, 
all because not all because but like a major a major 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 reason was because I was not giving giving myself time alone with my own thoughts to make sense of what is going on in my life. When you're constantly distracting yourself, you remove the ability, you remove yourself the gift, the ability to make sense of what is going on in your life. What is going on in your body? What are you feeling? And how do you want to live your life? And the reason why I know this lack of solitude was hurting me so much this lack of this lack of not having input from another person's mind the lack of having input you know what i'm trying to say um this lack of solitude was really hurting me because there was a time when i was either 17 or 18 where stutter where stuttering to me felt like a mystery. It felt like a big ball of confusion. I I felt like I couldn't grasp it. Sometimes I stuttered, sometimes I didn't. Not just not just stuttering, but sometimes I would bust quick, but a rare, rare, rare occasion I would have a sense of control. But let's just stick to stuttering. I couldn't put my hand on it. I couldn't hold it. It was like a mystery that kept changing. And this was internal terror. When, when I couldn't understand it and feel like I had a hand on it, I was fucking terrified that I would just stutter for the rest of my life as severely as I was, and as much shame and embarrassment and frustration that was coming up in every fucking interaction. And um, when I was about 17 or 18, it was like that until one month. And it's not the same month when I was 15 and I couldn't fuck sleep and all that. But it was this month where... I removed technology from my life. To tell you why I did that, I wouldn't be able to remember. Um, but I was motivated for some reason to remove technology from my life. So when I was at work, I was not on my phone. When I got home from work, I'd go to the gym and then come back and do nothing. I would either go for a walk, no earbuds, or I would go home and um, either write, write about stuttering, like my thoughts on it, write about my life, or just sit there and do fucking nothing. I was completely free from the input of another person's mind. A lot of the times at work, but every moment after work. It was in this month that I finally got a hold of what stuttering is. I finally cleared my mind enough for where all that fog, all that confusion, not being able to put the pieces to the pieces together, everything fucking came together. And it was the first time I felt like, oh, well, that's simple. Stuttering moved from this complex mystery of a thing to something that felt like, oh, well, that's simple. It's simple why I stutter. It makes sense. It makes sense because the times I stuttered and I felt this way and I was in this and I was in this environment Another time I stuttered and I felt this way and I felt like in this, I was thinking this way, I was in this environment. It's just like my brain put these pieces to, together and to 
work on stuttering, to work to be that version of myself that we all have, we all have, that is an effortless speaker. Why I'm that version of myself sometimes, like in a room by myself. Every person who stutters is either completely fluent in a room by themselves or barely stutters at all in a room by themselves. During that month, it put the pieces together of why I'm not that version of myself in social situations, why I'm more stressed, why I stutter a lot more, and then also put the pieces together of how I can be that version, how I can work on being that version, what that journey looks like on being that effortless version in social interactions. It made sense. It was like, that's fucking simple. But that is only possible because I was not having the input from another person's mind to keep my mind busy. My mind couldn't do anything. I mean, it couldn't be distracted by anything. It had to be with my thoughts. And I was making sense of my thoughts. I was writing my thoughts down. I was going for a walk and I was allowing my thoughts and my, and my emotions to process. And it was like when, it, when I got cleared out of the surface level, everyday thoughts that we're all stuck in, I got deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper to the core of what's going on inside of me. I made sense of like my re my my reality and shit just got so simple. Shit just got so simple. When you're not constantly distracting yourself from thinking, from feeling, so you're not stuck at this constant surface level bullshit thought and feeling but you remove the distractions so you you think and feel a lot deeper and you understand a lot deeper this removed the internal terror that i had when i didn't understand stuttering because when i didn't understand stuttering i would watch videos on youtube on how to overcome stuttering and i would try different things i would try this hypnosis, I've tried many hip, hypnosis, hypnotic, vi- hypnotic videos on YouTube. I tried many different speech techniques. I've watched every single fucking video on YouTube on how to overcome stuttering. But none of them removed that terror of like, is this shit ever going to go? Because I never, like, I was never certain of if I put energy into this, is it going to lead me to what I want? Is it going to allow me to overcome my stutter? How could it? Because I I didn't understand it. So I was just hoping that this guy did, that this girl did. I was hoping that they that they could, that they could just fix me. But the moment I understood it, I could put my hand on it. Be like, oh, this shit's simple is the moment I realized what my path looks like. I realized with every effort I put in, it's not going to waste. So I stopped questioning myself. I stopped questioning what I was doing and I was trusting myself because I knew where I needed to go because it made sense to me. I understood it. And the harsh truth is there's no amount of videos you can watch on stuttering or on premature ejaculation, on fucking any, on, on, da- on dating, on any interpersonal shit that's going to give you that sense of like, oh, I understand it now. It makes sense. No, it's a constant seeking when you're seeking for someone to tell you what it is because you may understand logically and it may make sense make sense logically but emotionally to emotionally understand it to emotionally feel like oh i i got this shit you need to you need to come to that conclusion yourself that feeling that understanding deep inside of you can only come 
through coming to the conclusion yourself. And I can guide you and I can help you. And I can get you to fucking turn off your phone so that you can come to the con- you can come to the conclusion yourself. But you you need to. You 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 need to have those thoughts. Connect the dots in your brain so fucking deep where you you finally are like, oh wait a second. I know what I need to do. And this is why, like when I've I've helped hundreds of people who stutter through online co- through online online coaching. This is this is why I, I don't just say like do this and do that and follow this exact plan and don't think for yourself. This is why every day, every, every night, what 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 I would suggest my clients to do is to turn off their phone, turn off all electronics at least one hour before bed and use this time to journal. Use this time just with your thoughts to make sense of what's going on, to take in the lessons that you learned from that day, from that week, or I guess from that day if you're doing it every day. Take in the lessons so your brain connects the dots of what's going on in your life. And if you do not have that, you cannot connect the dots and you cannot understand it in a fundamental level where it's simple. It's simple. Like stuttering is fucking simple once you understand it at its core. And there's no amount of me saying what stuttering is that's going to make you feel that way. You have to understand it yourself. It's your own journey. And um, from that point, I worked on my stutter. I built my self-esteem. I built my self-respect from that month of understanding it. And I, I never, I got rid of that internal terror of, is this ever going to go away? Am I ever going to learn to just be myself? Am I ever going to have that girlfriend? Am I, blah, 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 blah. that shit went away. Because I understood it. I understood what I needed to do. I understood the fundamental of it. And of course, seven years passed by. If I was 18 then, I'm 25 now. Seven years. Um, I understand more nuances of it. But the core is the same. The core is the same. And I've talked about it a lot in my videos and shit like that. So I'm not going to get into it here. I will make more v- more videos about it um, and, the, and the nuances of it. But regardless of what I come out with, you sit alone in a room by yourself is a necessity for, for you to connect the dots in your own brain. So now what I want to get to is an exercise that Cal Newport um, did with about 1,700 people or 1,300 people. I I already filmed this exercise um, just before creating creating this video. So I will now stop this recording and start that recording. But it was just like 30 minutes. 30 minutes ago so don't think it's like a different version of myself it's the same version but if for some somehow you're very very aware or sen- or sensitive and you feel like there's a little different en- a little different energy i either go up in energy or down in energy um just know it's a different recording but i'm the same person but um this this exercise is um very fucking important if you wish to create more solitude in your life, if you wish to overcome stuttering, to overcome premature ejaculation, to overcome, to just gain a sense of control in your life. And um, ultimately be happy. Ultimately have, f- have fulfillment in your life because the version of myself that is scrolling on Instagram scrolling on TikTok, doing that shit, 
and the version of myself who can't do that, who has to think of other ways to spend my time that isn't on technology, whether it be creating be creating better leisure activities such as meeting with people in person or actually just sitting by myself, those two different versions of myself, one is disorder city. One is this version of myself stutters a lot more. This version of myself dislikes my stutter. This version of myself is negative. This version of myself overthinks. This version of myself is a lot more sad, a lot more, a lot more depressed, depending upon how deep I go into that rabbit hole of scrolling. But that version of myself is completely different to the version I am right now. That is calm that is happy, that is fulfilled, that is clear, that makes sense of this world, that when I said, when you're constantly distracting yourself and any time you're just alone with your thoughts, you're just stuck in this surface level conversation, but when you give yourself that time and energy, right, it's not energy, but give yourself that time to just sit there and process your emotions and what's coming up for you, you get to the core of it, you get to the core of what's going on in your life, when you're living from that core, shit's simple. Shit makes sense. And of course, it does, it's not always like that. Like get, getting off your phone or whatever, it's not going to cure bad times, but allows you to process them with your heart open, with feeling, being present, being alive, being here, being now. You're a completely different version. You feel alive. You feel, just feel different. So let's get into this exercise. And what Cal calls this is the D is the declutter process. I believe that's what he says. There's only three. There's only three components to it. One, the first component to this exercise is to um, is to look at all the types of technologies that you're currently using, whether it be Instagram, Facebook, Reddit, um, WhatsApp, Netflix, video games, whatever it may be, and you are going to you're going to label, and this is just a thirty day. Thing, all right, you don't have to do this forever. This is just a 30 day thing. You lay, you look at all the types of technologies that you use, and then you label which ones are optional and which ones aren't. And what defines optional is, is if the technology, uh, the tech, is, blah, 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 blah. consider the technology optional on unless the removal would harm or significantly disrupt the daily operation of your professional or personal life. That is not optional. That's a technology you need to have if so. And um, some would even say Instagram for me is not optional because of my business of uh, because that's where a lot of my clients came from is because that's where a lot of people m a lot of people message me but no like I, if i have instagram on my phone i know how i act i know how i feel it's not fucking worth it so if it's going to severely hinder your 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 professional or personal life it's not optional but Every other tech, every other technology is optional. Okay. Step two is you remove all the optional technologies, whether it be Netflix, whether it be Instagram, blah, 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 or your whole phone, your whole fucking phone. 
you re or yeah, you remove these technologies from your phone and you tell yourself you're not going to go on it for 30 days. All right, you're not going to go on these technologies for 30 days. My guess is unless you have a business online, you don't need anything. You don't need anything. Having Instagram is not going to harm your social life. You may think so, there may be a pull, but for 30 days, it's going to do so much better for your social life. I Believe me, if you're not on it. <sighs> so much better. Um, and then, after the 30 days, step step three is you review what your life was like and what technologies you would like to incorporate back into your life. With the step three, when you're choosing which technologies you bring back into your life, he has three screening questions. And if the technology passes these screening questions, these three screening questions, screening questions, then it can go back on, it can go back into your life. Question one, after the 30 days, you ask yourself, does this technology directly support something I deeply value? Say, you have Instagram and you may say that Instagram doesn't directly support something I really value but my brother he has he has baby pictures that he posts on there and yes I deeply value staying up to date with my brother's baby pictures and showing that and showing that support and love to him so that passes Instagram for your brother's account would pass screening question number one. Screening question number two is, is this technology the best way to, so, to support this value? So is seeing your brother's baby pictures, is liking, is, is, is commenting on your brother's baby pictures, is that the best way to support the, the value you're trying to support? Whether, let's just say it's the value of family. Stay in contact with your family, seeing your, fa seeing your family. Well, if your brother's within fucking an hour drive or something, then it'd be no, because you can just drive, see your brother's baby in person, see your brother in person. That would be a lot more impactful to your value of family than liking your fucking brother's baby on Instagram. Say he's not there. Say he's not say he's across the say he's across the country. And he's taking fucking selfies with his baby. Um you could still call him. You can FaceTime him and say, let's see your baby. That would be a stronger bond that would be more value to your value than liking a picture on instagram so that wouldn't so instagram wouldn't pass screening screening question number two because there's a better way to honor this value you're picking up what i'm putting down um screening question number three is if it passes the two then how am I going to maximize this technology going forward to maximize its value and minimize its harms? And this is where you can get creative with um, with the tools the internet has. For example, I feel like I can't get completely rid of YouTube because I still post shit to I still post shit to YouTube. I love I love I love watching Harry Mack. Harry Mack's freestyles just bring so much fucking light to me. And um Cal Newport and also just like 
you youtube um is just such a resourceful thing that i'm, I'm not gonna say it. i'm never gonna use it again because i think that would do more harm than good but there is this i don't have youtube on my phone so i can't just watch a random vi a random video whenever i want to i only have it on my computer so it has to be intentional and also i have this plugin i what, what's it called it's called um it's called unhook remove youtube um so like when you click on you when you click on youtube there's all those there's all those rec there's all those recommended videos that that pop up that like drag your attention and now you're watching shit that you didn't go on youtube to watch but it's fucking it's drawing you in there's this plug there's a plugin you can have on your phone uh on your desktop on your laptop and i'm sure on your phone it's called unhook um removing the re the recommended videos from youtube so if i were to pull up my laptop right now and show you which i'm not going to do but if i were to do um you'd see there's no recommended videos when i'm watching a video even on the side where it would be usually rec usually recommended videos there's nothing there just blank white so i'm not distracted anytime i go on the, i go on it type in if you were to see my if you were to see my searches it's cal newport harry mac and um and uh just some more morning lo-fi study music those are like the the three things that i look up and um if it passes all those three filters and you find a way like you get creative you find ways like i want to keep i want to keep youtube but i'm going to remove the the re, the rec, the recommended thing to it for it um do that too and there's a bunch of different ways that you can um be creative with the apps that you feel like you need for your professional or personal life you need i fucking doubt you need reddit i fucking doubt you need instagram i fucking doubt you need facebook i doubt i know you don't need snapchat <laughs> um i know you don't need twitter like need no and it may seem like there's a lot of value to it after these third after these 30 days you'll see like actually i didn't need it and actually i'm a lot fucking happier and actually my interactions with people are so much better and the connections i have with people in person so much better and um i just can't wait for you to experience that being off your phone and um that's been my life for the the last summer and um now and so like the past four months um have been like that and i feel fucking alive and i feel great i feel happy i feel like there was times i'm there's times i'm sad there's times i i still hurt and i'm still i'm still confused but i still have that pull to scroll in to scroll instagram to i don't have the pull to download it but i'm like fuck just like i'm staring at my phone like give me something to do but i can't i can't i, I just have to sit there and then i write and then i go for a walk and then after that i'm like oh, i feel pretty good let's listen to a let's listen to an uh, let's listen to an audiobook i would just read a book but i don't have a book because i travel a lot i don't want to bring books with me um and although an uh, an audiobook isn't free from the input of another person's mind um it, it still gives me a lot of peace and i definitely have enough time alone from the input of another person's mind um besides that besides um yeah you know what i'm trying to say you know what i'm trying to say it's been an hour of talking and i'm gonna wrap this up so 
This is my argument for solitude, how important it is for your ability to overcome stuttering. I would even just say to live a meaningful life, to live a, to live a fulfilling life. I think, I think Cal says this thing where he's like, was, was it Cal? Uh, somebody. He's like, have you ever seen an, have you ever seen a, a, a happy, active Twitter user? It's like, no. I've, you've never seen somebody who's happy in life, who's on Twitter a lot. Or who's scrolling Instagram a lot. Like, you've, you, you never see that. You never see that. And isn't that fucking crazy? And isn't it crazy that any time that you feel your like your your life sucks, you're scrolling a lot, or you're playing a lot of games, you're smoking a lot of weed, isn't that something there? And when you don't give yourself any choice and you remove it from your phone and you say I'm not going to go on it for thirty days and you allow yourself to actually process your experience and you allow yourself to gain clarity in your life and you see what you actually value in life and how much you actually need in life and stuff just gets really fucking clear so after the 30 days you can choose if you want to keep it in your life but to bring it back to the stuttering after those 30 days i'm not going to say you're going to know you're going to have the same you can have the same epiphanies and stuff I had about stuttering. But you are going to place yourself in the best put in the best in the best position to or to overcome it. Simple as that. And if I'm telling every one of my people now who are lis who are listening to get off shit for 30 days. I'm going to have no one to watch my next video, but that's okay because your life is going to be significantly better away from YouTube, away from shit for just 30 days. than if you were to catch my next video. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, yeah, I still will just in 30, just in 30 days from now, if you want to take on that challenge, talk soon. Peace.